a DVB. Hey, yeah, first, I want to show you guys this one cool thing I found, uh, which some of you might find to be useful, um, which is this website, airpano.com. It's really cool. It has a bunch of, like, these 360 panoramas, which I've been finding to be incredibly useful. Um, so specifically this when when it comes to seeing getting a sense of architecture the it's it's super corny though it does this thing where it will um so it's kind of cool because you can get like a really you can zoom in quite a bit um but you might hear they they play the super when you have the screen selected they play this like super cheesy music it's, it's like different for each each one too um i guess here they just kind of chose like generic indian music <laughs> but it's uh but it's cool also this building uh this temple uh, was actually only oh, built, finished the finished construction of it in 2005, so it's actually a very new building. And I thought I thought it was like thousands of years old. Um, yeah. Anyway, the I think the outdoor ones don't look quite as good, mostly because it's really hard to. Get the correct sense of scale. Um, but um, anyway, that's uh, I thought that that's something that might be kind of cool. Um, that I've decided to. Oh yeah, hold on. Before I jump into the game scene, this is. Uh, you, know, you can see I'm starting to kind of build build this out to be a little similar to this layout here. Um, kind of having this these different layers, but instead of... Oh, so the thing is I keep finding myself wanting to use WSD um, when, I'm, when I'm in this. But we're gonna have... Uh... So, you know, there's gonna be these four I'm gonna have this outer wall surrounding it, and then it instead of sort of right now this is oriented towards this one main pathway. For me, it would be in all four directions. But anyway, we're 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 starting to piece it together. So let me put on my vest, and then we'll jump into Cairo. All right, uh, jet user, I'll see you later. Get some lunch. Um, okay, let's game capture. So this is um, one of this is something I've been wanting to do for a while, which is to revisit a lot of the first person puzzle games. Um, I played a lot of them early on in development. Hey, Solar Get ninety five. Good to hear that. Um, actually, you know, before I continue, let me just go and post on Twitter. Let everyone know that we are now live. Um, but anyway, early on in development, I played a lot of first-person puzzle games. Just kind of played every single one that I could get my hands on to study them. Um, now, not so much. I, I think they these are games that take quite a while to make. Um, so I, I mean, I kind of play them as they come out, but there hasn't been a whole lot of them recently other than the witness so Streaming a playthrough of Carl.
so okay we will and guys let me know how the um the audio for the yeah audio game audio let me let me know how that is and we will jump into this so Locked Door Puzzle. So this is a game made by Richard Perrin. Uh, he's a UK dev. Um, and we've talked a few times. He's, he's actually played a build of Manifold Garden. Um, which, yeah, I sent it to him and he, he played through it and he gave me a lot of feedback, which is great. Because uh, this is one of the games that, one of the earliest games, I first person indie puzzle games that I learned about and it was through Kevin Zoon who is a the creative director at The Young Horses who made Octodad and Kevin basically plays like every single game under the sun alright so um okay we are actually going to start a new game uh meta dvb hey David hello Welcome, have you recovered from GDC? Oh, interesting. Looks like uh, when you hit a new game, it, it shows you the... Uh, it runs through the splash screen. Oh, I see, interesting. We're actually going to, so, playing this, and I'm definitely noticing now he, the joystick sensitivity is like super high here. I think I'm going to lower this. Oh, wow. He actually gives you quite a bit of, um. this even more hey valid for life what's up how's it going uh things are going well we are doing this is something i haven't done in a while um okay when you have look sensitivity super low it actually just goes to zero so you're going to play cairo this is a game by richard perrin we're just starting out So you start off here, and there's no invisible clutter, so it's like really cool. I wonder how far back I can go. Oh, what is this? Okay. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, David, I don't know if you caught this. Uh, Meta DVB, I was just asking you how... Um, how 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 you're recovering from GDC okay I don't hear footsteps I wonder if that's uh something did oh, so hmm. okay this is made with unity so we'll continue So I just thought this was a really interesting decision on his part because it basically asked the player to walk into the void. Right? Like there's nothing here. But you do see that in the distance. So you're like, well, let's see what happens. Hey, Vavasser, this is a this is a game I've played before. Um, the Age of Grey, hello. Oh yeah, Keith. So yeah, no, what, basically what I'm doing is, uh, I, you know, I played a lot of first-person puzzle games early during my game's development. So that was about two, yeah, like three years ago. 
Uh, and now, and I haven't played a lot of them since, and I've decided what I'm going to do is revisit them to kind of, because I feel like now I, I know I'm, I'm more familiar with puzzle game design, and I want to revisit them and see um, you know, if my opinions at the time were valid, or if it's changed um Yeah, so we are going to go through uh, Fract, Antichamber, Nesanse, Talus Principle. And it's only, it's not, I'm not going to do like a full playthrough, right? We're only going to play for an hour, sort of like my regular stream time. Um, I'm, I'm guessing at some point there's just some kind of collider that stops you. Yeah, okay, so it's not very big. Um... Interesting. He's supposed to get this film grain on. I don't know if you guys can see it. I wonder if I can turn it off. I think it actually... Yeah, I'm going to turn it off. And uh, let's... The thing with those those post processing effects is sometimes they 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 seem outdated very quickly. Hmm. Hey, I wonder if this is uh I think this actually I wonder if this is volumetric lighting. It looks like, I don't think I, that's a really nice effect, and I don't, yeah, I bet that's volumetric. You know what, I think it is because you can see it's not, he's at the opening and it's got this like jagged shape, right? But this, what he's got here is really just a cone. Um, so I think that's, yeah, you can see it, it doesn't quite line up with the light on the floor. But still, it's a really nice effect when you first come in. Oh, interesting. So this pillar broke. Environmental storytelling. Yeah, Fract did... I wasn't even aware you could disable it in Fract. Um... Oh no, you know what? There are actually there actually are footsteps. Hmm. Yeah, so I remember this this is the first puzzle. I really like this game, but I, th I think one of the problems that it had was that a lot of puzzles involved in you pushing with your body. And that meant like half the time when you're solving them, you're just like, you're up against the wall. Which I don't think is, is super interesting visually. Um, okay, that thing must have done something. Well, I don't have anywhere else to go, so I'm going to go down. Interesting. I'm also finding it very, very hard to see stuff in this game now. Hey there! Yeah, it's midday and bright. How's the visibility? I mean... It's it's actually the the visibility is quite hard. Yeah, it is. Even with blinds, it's it's hard for me 
to make the, my room super dark. Cone mesh with an added. Hey, Praetorian, Vivaster, Okinawa Terminal. Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, cone mesh with additive blender. I would like to do that too at some point in my game. Maybe towards the end. The one thing I don't like. Um, hey, Abstractron. Welcome. Hello. Um, Um, yeah, I actually used to have these portals. I don't like these portals as much. I think they are... I mean, they're they're interesting because like they, they show you the room on the other side and they, I think, allowed for the loading of a new scene. But I think I'd prefer it if it was more seamless, which is what we're doing. But that technically, that's just much harder. But the load times are, are so fast here. I don't think it... It makes a huge difference. I just, yeah, I think, I don't know. I think Richard made it work really well. It's kind of cool. Ah, Flux. I used to have Flux, except then I tended to work at night quite a bit. Oh, so this, this, I did not like this. The, um, it's just so jarring. Oh, interesting. I can hear the, uh... Hmm. Although the one thing that I really like with this is it gets that, um... That dark... Having the black background gives it this, like, very creepy feel, which in my game it doesn't have. Um... Oh, this was one of my favorite... I actually thought about stealing this, but um, but it doesn't really work as well in my game. Why, why did he not fall to infinity? Yeah, that should, all games should do that now. Um, but I, I remember seeing this for the first time and, and thinking it was very, very neat. You know, this actually kind of reminds me of Monument Valley. Actually, you know what? That, I think this visually and atmospherically feels a lot more like Monument Valley because it's you're sort of in this space with this architecture in a void. I've actually never noticed that before. Um, so this was a cool puzzle, right? Because you you had um, I think that that tower raised up um, when you walk close to where it's at. And so the only thing you could do was kind of come up. And this brings it down. Oh, wait. Ah, oh, right, so you had to. Numa Breath of Life, I have not played that. Is that a first-person puzzle game? I think, I believe Richard made all of these. Man, we should get Richard on the show. I think Richard made all of these with, um, in Google SketchUp. And I'm not, I'm not sure. I think he might have gone to architecture school, actually. Um. But I know another a big influence on the game is actually this manga, Blame, by Sutomu Nihei. He's actually, if you guys, if any of you watch Netflix, there's, um, uh, there's, uh, Knights of Sidonia, he also did that. Well, I think with Dying, the thing is, he could have, the, the, he had two choices. One was to add the invisible box colliders. Or to have world wrapping, and I think world wrapping would, is such a game changer that it it wouldn't make doesn't really make sense in this world. So he has to have dying. Um. Oh wait, this is where I came from. But but what what I've oh you know what I've taken from this 
gained, though, is, like, um, I guess this is technically a puzzle, uh, but this is more of a transition area, so what I've done is I've sort of broken up these spaces. I think there's an E at the end of the title. the hell this kind of reminds you of also the this is like the equivalent of the room in antechamber with the um uh with that that the, the gallery room this is definitely where i came from okay Um, I don't remember if there was something I needed to do here. I'm trying to remember what I... Or did I just have to walk to each of these? I think the one thing I, that, that this game wasn't very good at was communicating which parts were puzzle elements. It also had the hint system. Which I think he should not have done. When this room has a purpose, it should become obvious. Because then you... you, I think with the hint system, you end up... You end up referencing... You end up... It becomes like a bit of a clutch. Um, oh, interesting. I did not notice this. Right? Because instead of, instead of using that... Instead of... Instead of walking, instead of using the game to guide the player, you end up relying on hints. Um, yeah, fall into a portal that drops you back where you fell off instead of bang, 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 dead. Yeah. Um, oh, bungeeing back to where you were, I think, is good. Um, I kind of just want to see the different hints in this area. You must solve four key puzzles and return here. Uh, see, this is too spoilery. Yeah, this is, um, I, I don't, I can see why he did the hint system, but I, I think that was not, like, some people have suggested adding hints, but the thing is, because I didn't choose, chose not to use hints, it, it, it more, um, it, it forced me to use different other solutions for the architecture here. Also, the hint was totally for this room and not for the room I was in before. Um, however, I really do, I do really do think you did a good job with the with creating a sense of atmosphere and lighting. And I think scale is done really well in this game. I think because of the um, uh, he sort of has objects that are kind of like human size, like these steps. So he's got two doors there. So all the doors are different, are shaped differently. Oh no, this is where I came in from. Shifting bits. Yeah, I think they, they become not only a crutch for players, but designers as well. Yeah, that's a very, very good point. Yeah, the, the hints become crutch both for the player and the designer. Bus station lamppost with cube shapes. You may Nike. Hey, Pevzi23, welcome. I actually do not know who You may Nikki is. Um, but cool. I think he's. I think it's like it's just one texture. Just like one. I don't think he uses a whole lot of different textures. Um, the one thing that's cool is he has like slopes, which I do not have. But uh, he also does stuff like this, where with the door they they sort of pop out a bit, and I don't I don't do stuff like that. Is that okay? So he's got ambient occlusion. Is that? I think this might be. I think this is screen space ambient occlusion. I don't think it's baked in because I can see it moving. 
shifting around. Um, yeah, anyway, this game was a really big influence early on. And I think these are coffins. Oh, so this is one of the coolest parts. And uh, I am going to spoil this. Um, hey, Bunkin! Uh, stealing ideas. Well, I, I took the ones out. I think, well, obviously we're, we're spoiling stuff, but I, so, um, I believe that this, the one interpretation of the story of the game is that it's, a spaceship that recreates Earth. Um, I think ultimately the game is about second chances. It feels very personal. And and I think this is actually one of the coolest parts of it, the way he does narrative. I believe these are where people are like sleeping inside and what you're seeing is from their point of view. And I think this is supposed to be yours, your, your point of view. That's why, that's why it's looking it's your own view looking in. Um, so I think that's, these are not coffins, they're beds. Um, and I'm not sure if these other people are dead or still asleep. But anyway, so he's got, these are like what I call transition areas, right? Like. You came in from that hub and you walk through this area, and I've 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 done that. So I have that structure, um, as your your uh, kind of, and it's like you know. Except his, I think his puzzle rooms are a little bit more. Um, oh right. So you walk around, I think this is supposed to be water. Um, so this is cool, except, so you do this thing, you fall down, and I remember it having a really hard time finding my way back. Yeah, you know what, I think it is screen space ambient occlusion. Oh, I love these. I love sort of this like this half sphere with the staircase. That looks very cool. I can't. I don't have anything like that. Is this supposed to be water? Because where does it go? Why isn't it just flooding? Or maybe it isn't water. Oh, these are very nice. This actually, this feels very naissance He's got all these corridors. Okay, so... I, if I, I'm trying to remember what... How do I even solve this puzzle? You, I had to like step on these in a certain sequence. And uh... I think I had to look at... Is that... Is that the symbol? No, I bet the symbol... I think the symbol is outside. And I had to make it. I think it's this symbol that I have to make. Okay, I gotta write this down. Hey, Pepsi! Uh, Yume Nikkei is a 2D RPG maker game that's favorite of mine. Not really a puzzle game. It's more exploration abstract narrative. Okay, I will check this out. I wonder, I feel like that might have been a big influence on, uh, I think, you know what, I think I might have heard of it from Sean Hogan, who made Anodyne, which is very... Yeah, 
Yeah, see, I don't, I don't, I, I think, I'm pretty sure it's been, it's been such a long time, but I think that symbol is from the outside, which is, hmm. Although now that I look at it, the light actually gives you a hint, right? The, the light looks like the symbol, um, but I, so I, I was going to say it's not fair because it asks you, it, it puts the thing that you need to know on the outside. Is this? Oh, never mind. You know what? Actually, he's at the light there the whole time. So. Hmm. Okay, not this one. Uh, is this. Would this be it? No, that looks like it's the wrong. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I think. I think I probably also looked it up. Some puzzles, some solutions. Start to the ones later on. Okay, not that one. Yeah, these are more mist, very mist like puzzles. Um, okay. Where is the last one? I think it's this one. Oh, okay, there we go. Yes, I solved it. Okay, all right, so all the, all the water channels have been opened. I think. Okay, I think it just opened up these gates up there. Yeah. Oh, neat. And then there's, I guess, something's broken. <laughs> Alright, let's go back outside. Yeah, this this is it. I think it's really the architecture of it that I, that I like. Um... I'm not a fan of having to backtrack this early on. I think you should have had a door there that opened up and just took you back into the space. The jump is very floaty. But anyway, I, I do I do really like this game. I'm not trying to like criticize it. Oh, right. Yes. Okay, I remember, I thought this was very cool. Because it, it meant you were able to kind of make changes in those levels and then it would affect this space. Yeah, I think more clear feedback on that you've done everything you needed. I think Fract, actually, when we look at Fract, that was the one thing I liked about Fract was I think it, it, it always gave you very clear feedback. Um, oh no, we've been into this room. So let's go to this one. Oh yeah, I think those are those are. Oh right, I remember. I like this room a lot. Oh no! Come on, don't kill me! Oh, I totally should have landed there. Oh right, so this they had a problem with the respawn code. Fuck you! <laughs> like if you moved, oh fuck, it would it like fucked up the oh shit. Um. I think it fucks up the respawn. We're just gonna keep moving forward until I, I actually land somewhere. I think it like lands you directly above or something. Oh fuck. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> um, I remember that. That's uh. That was not fun. 
Yeah, the I'm so glad I don't have respawn code. It's it's I think the respawn thing like just puts you directly above and maybe with a little bit offset and when you when you don't um when you when you're off just enough you end up getting trapped in this loop. Uh well, which one are you talking about? The um when games withhold that? Which when games withhold what? I so I really, really like this. Actually I'm gonna take a screenshot. Um oh, right, so this is this is again what I would call actually you know what let me go back outside. Yeah, I think this is the big thing I got from this game was was the idea of having these transition levels. Um, just gonna go look at that tower. Oh, with regards to feedback, yeah. Oh, this is a lot of walking. That's a that's the thing with some of these like really cool architectures, they result in a lot of walking. Right, because to climb back up you have to walk and like you have to Yeah, you basically have to traverse the entire thing. Is this a PC game? Yes, it is. Uh hello Sam Paula Vine. It's called Cairo. Um Alright, you start to hear the radio static. I think there's a secret behind here. Yes, there we go. What was it? I think it disappeared when I found it. Ah, yes, this puzzle. Uh, this one I was stuck on for a long time. So, right, when you stand on this, and you get the idea that you want to light, you want to stand on these little triangles and they light up the world. So, so the one thing with Cairo is that every puzzle has a different mechanic. Very, very missed like puzzles. This one's taking forever. Oh, wow, okay. You should definitely check it out. I didn't realize it was on sale right now. So, so this one took a while because the idea is you figure out, like, okay, well, this one, this piece, this wall is broken. And, um,. Are you able to step on it or let's see what's happening? Oh right, once you step on it, it doesn't turn off. That was the problem. And it, this one actually took me a while because of the way it's positioned. I think you're, you're supposed to like jam this in there at the right time, maybe? But... I don't know why he placed... Like, what? why is this thing here? Oh, I see. Okay, so I think... Right, so I think the way this is designed was th this this contraption was broken and you had to jam something in there. And to provide a piece to jam into it, he had this pillar and it was broken off of. Otherwise, it was just sort of there. But 
I kind of wish she had more spacing. Um, like, it took me a really long time before I realized I could push this. But I think this is the, uh, the light room. And now there are two doors here. Okay, wait. Let me make sure the other door... Is, I think this is this is where I came in from. Yeah, the, the, the problem with this is, like, it's, um... It does give you a hint at the room you're about to enter, but not quite enough. Yeah, I was stuck on that puzzle for a very long time. And and it, it was sort of clear what I had to do. I knew I had to jam something in there to break it. But the realizing what I can what I could interact with and what I couldn't was something that took a while. Oh, there's that same symbol from the water room. Okay, so there's there's multiple ways of going into the water room. Seems like, you know, we're going to take this shortcut. And get out of here. Ah, oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's sort of one thing that, uh, Jack, uh, Monaghan said on Twitter, which is, whatever you think is obvious, the player will think is subtle, and whatever you think is subtle, the player will think is invisible. So, now I gotta walk all the way back. Well, that issue wasn't so bad. But I think, well, the other thing to do would be to do it like uh, in Skyrim, where you go through a dungeon, and then after you beat whatever, the boss that's in there, it's just like, oh, there's an exit, so I can leave now. So I guess the water and the light rooms are connected. We've done those. It was it was colored differently, yeah. I never figured this out. And I remember <laughs> looking at the hints, and it just said like, have you tried walking over? Not everything is an obstacle to overcome. The this is not everything is this feels like a antechamber quote quote. Um Okay, maybe maybe the hints are sort of like the way Antichamber does their things. I do think there is a puzzle. I never figured it out. Um, probably has to do with... Getting the sound. No, so we've been to, that's the music room, we've gone there. Oh, actually, now that's, you know what, so that is actually kind of obvious, because you can see that these two rooms, this pillar's broken, and these other two are not. Oh, I like this level a lot. Yes. I actually might have something like this in my game. Yeah, so I'm a big fan of these steps. Um, hmm. Yeah, you know, I really like this one. I wonder if there's... Okay, there's no console. I was gonna go into no clip. Um, but yeah, I'm a, I really, really like this area. Very gorgeous. Oh man, the walk on the stairs is. 
But yeah, I think this is one of my favorite areas in Cairo. Um, really love what Richard did here. And yeah, you know what? The more I look at, the more I think it is definitely screen space, ambient occlusion, and all baked in because you can see it move. But um, but yeah, this is such a this is such a nice area. Oh, what? Oh, I love this. Right, this is a really cool way of preventing the player from going because he also. He actually does do it. Oh, you know, so this reminds me actually, so you can see how these form a, an image. Uh, I actually used to have another a mechanic in Manifold Garden that was similar to The Witness where you had to look at form shapes and look at them. I got it from Labyrinth where there's a scene where you can see David Bowie's face like in the rocks. And I wanted to do something similar, except it was actually a really hard thing to design. And also it wasn't a lot of fun because it became a lot of pixel hunting um uh water only starts falling as you enter the room this location is aesthetically pleasing lots of right angles yeah well i don't know if it's very me it's very manifold garden this is nice okay so he's not letting me go there where am i supposed to go in this one again Yeah, I should do something like this. Um, yeah, this is a really nice level. Take some screenshots. Oh, right. Water only starts falling as you enter the room. Uh, yeah, I think that's just because he's doing the thing in Unity where the... It's, it's using the particle effects, and they don't... Um, uh, I think the visible one is the Collider one. Are you talking about this electricity level or the one before? Crap nerd. Hello, welcome, by the way. Yeah, KSRM, I think it's, um, it's, he's using the Unity particle effects and they don't start until you enter the scene. There's probably a way to do it where you can have them in some half state. Um, okay. I think it was, how do I do this again? Oh, right, you gotta, you gotta ignite this one. I actually think when I replay now, I think this is actually the first room I went into. <laughs> um, okay, I think you start from the middle. Oh, right. Um, and I think if you didn't start from the middle, nothing happened. Is it? Somewhat disappointed that when you stand on this, it just does, doesn't just spin you around, which you think it should, right? All right. I feel like this should kill you. This was built in Unity, yes. Oh, there is a... Oh, pre-warm. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it, it would be very, very disorienting. Um, I think this is done. There's a secret here too. Fuck. Do you have to walk back out again? 
Or maybe if they just didn't spin super fast, then I think he could have done it. Anyway, I do I do really like this game. I'm not trying to be all critical of it. Um, it's definitely a game that had a big influence on 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 the way I've designed it. Oh. Oh, I remember this level. This is one of my favorites. I thought this was a really cool puzzle. The Witness has something like this, I think. Oh, so close, it got there. Has anyone seen the Maze Runner? It's like, uh, it's one of those young adult dystopian films. It's not very good, but it's got a space that looks like this. Jonova Twitch. Hey, Garrett. Um, uh, Crap Nerd, are you talking about, uh, Cairo? Yeah, there were, I mean, it did, he did have the hint system, but I don't think they were enough. Um, game designers analyzing Christian games from their perspective. Um, yeah, I've been wanting to do this for a while, uh, revisiting their games. And now I kind of see stuff, like, <sighs> this game feels very personal. I like the space, but I can see how visually it does get a bit stale. Although I think he's done a lot. He does a lot with just the architecture and making everything feel different. But, um... I'm trying to wonder, I'm trying to see how I can do that. I think, I think what it is, is that everything has like the same level of detail. Like you never get things below a certain size. Oh, I love this too. This is this is one of my favorite levels. I think everything being on the same scale can feel a bit exhausting, but I think he, he gets away by um See like I have a level similar to this right and we just we just make it infinite. But I think he he does a lot with like very little, which I think is really awesome. Uh I don't think the ambient occlusion works. It's looks like ambient occlusion is off here. Treasure maze game in Clock Town. At a distance. No, actually, um, David David Blasky, the programmer on Manifold Garden, told me about it. Um, I actually need to stop. I, I think he set it up on this computer, and I'm supposed to go by and play it. Um, at some point, but yes, that has a very similar. What the hell? This actually reminds me of some of the levels in Fract. So this music is very. It's actually quite stressful to me. Did we come from here? Yeah, we did.
I do. Yeah, I think it's a. It's a. It's a. I think it's screen space ambient occlusion, but I think he's disabled it here. Cause I'm not. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing any ambient occlusion here. Question with this game, of course, is how come everything is inside? Oh, see, so that was nice. Right, so that was cool because it, it basically led you around back and... Oh, right, so now this is done and I think I jump in and I think this is where we go to part two of the game. Oh, right, so the other thing that Kyra's got is also kind of these cutscenes. Right, so I think this is sort of where, like, the second part of the game happens. That's That was, like, the first hub. Um, this is also a very cool space. This is very nascent, say blame more and more blame than nason say i guess since that's Have I played Try? Yes, I have. Um, I have played Try. I actually got motion sickness from Try, though. Um, now, I think with this one, I had to, like, direct the light, and you could use it. Um, yeah, I actually bought them, bought that game before it was out. But um, but I, get, I got motion sick playing it. I think it's because, like, the way they do the wall walking, you can go up to any angle. I wonder how well a game like Cairo would do in the current market. Okay, so I have to turn... Oh, I remember this one was... You gotta, like, turn this thing? How old is this game? I think it came out, it's like four or five years old now. Um, okay, I got to, like, like this is this like sundial or something and I have to turn it so that, what do I have to do here? I think somehow I was like redirecting a beam of light from Okay, wait a second. Let me go back, I think. I think there are two parts of this puzzle. And I think I had to redirect a beam of light. to redirect the beam of light to I think it was like from here out to there but I'm not sure if there was something I needed to do to take this beam and have it shot out there or if I just had to get this part in the right orientation Yeah, no, I think it had to... 
I have to turn this, but I'm just not... I think there's two parts of it. Um, but anyway, I think I might... Let's see if we can figure this out. I might just... I think the other thing though, the other problem here is it's like it's not, I'm not really even sure what the right orientation of this is. I think, I think it's the one, I think it's this one. Fuck! Okay. Um, I feel like there's another part that I'm missing. Oh, Manifold Garden is not... I don't have plans to do PSVR. I'm not actually sure. I know I get the, um, the VR question a lot, but I'm not actually sure that it will work. I think it's actually going to make a lot of people sick. Um... I think I'm missing the part where I'm supposed to light up the beam, but I'm forgetting where that is. I mean, I've totally beaten... I Well, I don't know... Oh! Look! Look, look! Richard is missing a... I found a bug. He's, he's missing a mesh there. Yep, you can totally see it. I've seen this before. It's missing a face there. Must have accidentally deleted that. Ah, there we go. This thing. So, yeah, so see, it shines a light into there. And then I'm supposed to... I I feel like he could have done... Hmm, maybe. We'll see. Okay, so now, now it's clear that it just has to shine up. Right, so... The thing we're missing is it needs to point to that bottom base. Um, Alright, I got it. Probably flipped. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, right. Hmm, <sighs> okay, wrong path. So I think with, with the puzzle design here is that because you can continue here without lighting up the beam, you can kind of miss, you can miss this part and just end up betraying this thing and not realizing what's happening. And then there's also the thing, the issue where it, because everything gets like tainted red, it's actually really hard to see that thing. Um, Okay, he doesn't have a reticle. Oh, I think this is the symbol. At the... That's it, I solved it. Oh, there we go. Let's go over there. Ugh. 
Right, so I believe this is the room we first came out of. Um, that's the, well, right, so that's the island we started on. This is the island we came to. We solved a bunch of rooms. We lit up the beam, and now this new area is open to us. Um, and I think all I have to do is walk. I really like the sense of scale here. It's funny because Nason Sei also has a room area just like this. I think he might have gotten it from Cairo. Anyway, if you're enjoying this stream, you should definitely um, follow the channel. I feel like now one thing I would kind of like, maybe the one thing I keep hoping for is some kind of like visual break. Hmm. Sure thing. So we've been playing for about an hour. I think I'm actually going to end the stream now so I can get back to work. But this is, um, you know, this is a study of Cairo, uh, which is a first-person puzzle game by Richard Perrin. Oh, this is one of my favorite puzzles. It's like, you have to move. I like this because it's not so much like a, it's not like a pixel hunting thing. Um, uh, this is a first-person puzzle game I played when uh, early on in development, um, when I was sort of looking at other indie first-person puzzle games. And I, yeah, so I'm, I'm starting this series now. I guess this is the first one where I replay first person puzzle games and study them uh, now that now that I've been making one for a few years. I, think there's, I bet there's a, I bet there's a puzzle, I bet there's a secret back here. Oh, no. There should be. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So I think I think one issue um, with this is that there's not. Um, I think these are like little mini miniature models of all the islands in the game. I think one issue with the game is that it's not clear how much is left to do. And I think that's something that players like to know. Anti Chamber has the map. Fract, you can kind of see the entire world, the witness as well. Um, but this one doesn't, right? This one is sort of these like enclosed rooms all over. Um, all right, man. Abstract Tron. Abstract Tron. Uh, thanks for stopping by, man. Uh, thank you for checking it out. Um, 
dissecting them to help. Yeah, and it's, it's sort of interesting. <laughs> Has anyone played the end of Antichamber? This actually reminds me a lot of it. This looks like the end of Antichamber a lot. Or Antichamber, the end of Antichamber looks like this. I'm not even sure. Maybe games are just referencing each other quite a bit. I think this one... I remember this part being actually quite difficult. Um, but yeah, I think the next one I'll, I'll maybe... I'll, I think I'll play Portal next time. Uh, so that'll be next Friday. So we're... So like, I think I'm going to do this to do one... Uh, the series is going to be interspersed with the game design critique where I talk to other devs about a work in progress indie game and then I'll revisit this. So this is like in the first person puzzle game series. So yeah, it's Cairo. Uh, I haven't checked, but apparently there is, um, there is, uh, uh, it's currently on sale for 99 cents. I think somebody mentioned that. Um, I see my highly recommend it. I, I um, there's still quite a bit of the game left, and I do think it's one one thing that I really like. I'll talk why I really like the game is I think it's incredibly personal, um, both in the story. Like I don't think it's as well designed as Antichamber is, at least in terms of the puzzles, the flow of it, um, or like the witness. It's not. It, it doesn't feel like it's part of that. John Blow school of game design of a single mechanic that's that has different permutations and you kind of just you know explore variations of it it feels a lot more like mist where it's just the, yeah I guess these like are narrative puzzle games where there's some kind of meaning they have some kind of meaning in the world but of course the problem is they are if you're not quite thinking the same way as the designer they feel very obtuse um however i do really like the spaces that he's created and yeah see now you can see that he's got the screen space ambient occlusion on and sometimes they're off but anyway i, I remember playing it really liking the minimalism really like the way he does the narrative um really like how personal it feels and the way these spaces are broken up well, I think the other thing is that Mist has, um, Mist, like, see, this is such a nice space. I think you got the lighting and the colors really well done here. Mist also has, um, but, but Mist also has the, the videos, which are very helpful, right? That's like, go here, go there, and, um, yeah, the world in Mist is just a lot more detailed. It's had this thing where like every every mechanic is different and I think with this one you're supposed to like use this to send the ball somewhere uh, I think you gotta send it over there but anyway I'm gonna end the stream um, this one's cool it's it's uh you gotta like push, push these blocks so so this is the problem I'm talking about right it's like Half the time you're solving puzzles, this is what you're seeing. Um, like you can you can do this too. Can you wait? Can I push? Yeah, you can push it while looking outside, but still like this is this is too much wall when you're pushing. Um, but yeah, I do I do think I think like this screenshot, this could be something out of mist. This is, this is very misty. Um, but anyway, thank you all for stopping by. Um, this is Cairo. We'll do, might do one next Friday. If I, um, I got to email the Glitch Space guys. I think we might have them on the stream and talk about that game, which is coming out soon. Um, though they might be pretty crazy with, uh, with their game coming out. Um, how the pushing could be improved... Yeah, it's hard, right? I mean, if you... 
I used to have puzzles. I used to have puzzles that involve pushing, and they just didn't feel fun. Anti chamber has them too, and I actually had a really hard time. There was there was one puzzle in anti chamber where you have to like push something, and then this door opens behind you. And I was stuck on that one for a long time because like when you're pushing, you can't see anything. So, a uh, window on it could work too. Um, oh yeah, you can also see it, it, you're clipping into it. Like, I don't know if you guys see that, the left side of the screen. I've clipped... Did I? I'm pretty sure I just clipped through the box there. Um, anyway. I will see you guys later. Have a good... Have a happy Friday, and have a good weekend, everybody.